Hey, this is Akta and I've just come back from my graduation trip to Japan and I thought I'd share with you guys what I got and talk a little bit about where I went and what I did. I don't usually do these kinds of acquisition slash loot videos but I thought it'd be interesting to try out. So my first stop was Osaka and much of my budget was spent at Universal Studios. Being a huge Harry Potter fan since my teacher first recommended me the books in primary school, visiting the attraction in Japan was like a childhood dream come true. The attention to detail that went into the sets and merchandise was unbelievable and everything looked like it came right out of the movies. In terms of candy, we have a couple of chocolate frogs, Bertie Bot's Every Flavor Beans, Exploding bonbons, butter beer drops, a chocolate wand, Drubo's best blowing gum, an edible sugar quill lollipop, a box of Honeyduke's macaroons, and a bottle of good old pumpkin juice. I also got a commemorative butterbeer mug for trying out their butterbeer. Absolutely love the butterscotch flavour, but not too big a fan of the ginger. In terms of toys and props, I got myself a golden snitch, decoy detonator wind up toy, chocolate frog keyring, quibbler magazine poster with pop out spec to specs and a couple of replica wands, one of Draco Malfoy's and one of the 13 original designs available at Universal Studios. I have to say that Draco's wand design is one of my favourite from the film series. Not only did it play a pivotal role in the series, it's simple and sleek and everything I want a wand to be. For a limited time as part of their Cool Japan initiative, they had Evangelion and Shingeki no Kyojin attractions. While I couldn't actually see the movies or ride the rides due to the unbelievably long queues, I did manage to get one of the best popcorn buckets in the world. Yes, this is a popcorn bucket and yes, it's essentially Unit O1's head. Not only does it actually hold a considerably large amount of popcorn, the strap attachment points on either side of its head actually fold in flush and it has an opening mouth that doubles as a switch for its light up eyes. Now how cool is that? I also got the entry plug tumbler with orange LCL fruit punch. And a commemorative photo of me being eaten up by a titan. While I won't show you the photo, the amazing thing about this card is that it even plays the opening theme song. Another amusement park I visited when I was in Osaka was the Toei Kyoto Studio Park, a park that's based on many of the Toei live-action period dramas and movies. Part of the park was an actual set that they still use from time to time and being in it was like being transported back into the past. However, what truly caught my attention was the Superhero Land exhibit with suits and props from both Kamen Rider and Super Sentai. While the attractions were fun and all, the only things I managed to pick up were a set of rubber shurikens, black sesame yatsuhashi, and a Kamen Rider Fies and Gaim file and pencil board set. My next stop was Tokyo. First of all, what else but Akihabara and Mandarake. You'd think that these would be the places that I would blow most of my budget on, but that was not the case. A combination of crazy prices that were meant to take advantage of uninformed tourists and the fact that most of the stuff that I was looking for was already sold out meant that my wallet was left relatively intact. What I did manage to get, however, were some items that I had always wanted to get but never found the chance to purchase. First off, we have Metamorphose Dino Getter 2 by Sentinel. Now, I am a huge Getter 2 fan. There's just something about its sleek and suave design that just appeals to me. The Dino Getter line by Sentinel takes the Getter Robo designs and fuses them with dinosaurs for the franchise's 40th anniversary. It's perfectly transformable between its Getter 2 and T-Rex mode and you really can't get any cooler than that. Found for an extremely reasonable price, this is Takato's upgraded D-Arc from the Digimon Tamer series. There is a rarer version with the gold and silver reversed, but this was the version that I wanted due to being well enemy accurate. A little bit out of left field, especially for this channel, this is the DX Wall Kaiser figure from Maho Sentai Maji Ranger. Those of you who have been following me for some time know that I'm not 
that into Super Sentai as I kind of fell out of it as I was growing up. However, I still keep up with the latest news, watch several episodes from time to time, and pick up the mecha that appeal to me the most, by which I mean have great designs and kick-ass transformations. In addition to the Shinken O and Magi King, this is the third Sentai mech that I've acquired. The antagonist for a good part of the Magi Ranger series, it's another triple changer, from a knight on a horse, to a centaur, to a bipedal robot. Excellent design, excellent transformation. Another old figure is this absolutely humongous 33cm cast off rider figure of Kabuto. It has a spring loaded horn, pop of armor, and henshin sounds. For its size and what it does, I'd say it was a pretty good deal at just over 10 bucks. This is the fast pack set for Isamu's YF29 that appeared in the Macross 30 game. Nothing much to say about this one, save for the fact that I can finally arm up my YF29 after all this time. As part of the promotion from the Psycho Pass movie, audience members were given small collections of setting material each time they viewed the movie. Love the franchise and love exclusives, so I picked up Akane as she is one of my favourite characters from the show. Moving on, I have to say that prize figures are great. Whether you're a veteran collector or just starting out, these figures are phenomenal value for money, averaging at just $10 each. At times, they can even stand up to much more expensive figures in terms of quality. That being said, here is the very first Monster Strike figure ever produced, Napoleon, which was incidentally one of my first 5-star monsters in the game. Love the game, though I think they're starting to become a little bit too repetitive. Next up is Miyakawa Hikage from the Lucky Star spin-off Miyakawa Ke no Kufuku. Not only do I love the series, it actually holds a special place in my heart as it was the first anime that I translated as part of a fan subgroup. And lastly, I managed to win this k 5th anniversary Ritsu figure with just one try at the Ichiban Kuji. Considering the fact that Akihabara is known as the Electric Town, I was hoping to get a used Wonderstone colour as I had never owned one and had wanted to play some of the games that were never ported to other systems. I was truly disappointed when my search turned up nothing, especially after visiting more than a number of used game stores. I did manage to pick up a copy of Digimon Tamer's Battle Spirit version 1.5, an improved version of the original that features new characters and evolutions. Guess I'll have to get a one on colour on eBay. The last thing that caught my attention when I was perusing the endless shelves of Mandarake was a complete inbox card commune from the very first Pretty Cure series, Futariwa Pretty Cure. Love the original show, second only to Hard Catch, and it's great to have a nice set of the original transformation device from the series that started it all. Speaking of Pretty Cure, let's move on to the first in a series of specialty stores. I visited both the Osaka and Tokyo Pretty Cure stores. However, I didn't get much here either, and only picked up a chibi strap of Cure Blossom, a tin of Sakuma Drops dressed up in Pretty Cure characters, and a couple of blind bag can badges. Fortunately enough, the two I managed to pick happened to be two of my favourite cures, Cure Blossom and Cure Black. Similarly, I managed to go to both the Osaka and Tokyo Pokemon centers as well. This time around, I took the plunge and bought myself my very first Mega Bracelet or Mega Bangle. Together with it, I got a boatload of Mega Stone Pluses. The Mega Bangle, what the Mega Ring should have been in the first place, is actually pretty cool as each Mega Stone activates unique lights and sounds. Other than that, I got a Moncole Mega Gengar and the Mega Blaziken and Mega Mewtwo Y strap. And yes, a random Gachapon Kalos Gym Badge as well. When I visited the Noitamina store in Odaiba, I had the surprise of my life. One of the anime that I'm following now is Bokudake ga Inaimachi, and I am thoroughly enjoying it. It's an anime that leaves me wanting more at the end of every episode. And as luck would have it, they were having a special early screening of the next episode, episode 6, a whole week before it aired on TV. The downside, I had to now wait 2 weeks for the next episode. Regardless, I got a couple of special postcards for attending the screening. And while I was there, I picked up a pretty nifty Psycho Pass pin badge. And last but not least, a pair of Punchline Blind Box 
panties, replica panties. I'm not kidding you. And by the way, if you haven't seen the series yet, it's freaking phenomenal. It seems completely random at first, but the way it ties everything together and it's it's just beyond brilliant. And I know it sounds like I'm just trying to justify my purchase, but it's definitely one of my top picks from that season. Definitely check this series out. The Evangelion store next to Ikebukuro Station was smaller than I'd initially thought. If I'm not mistaken, they had relocated from their original location of Harajuku, which was very much bigger. Despite their smaller store space, I did manage to pick up a pair of replica interface headsets in both Ray and Asuka colors, something that I've been wanting to complement my Evangelion display for quite some time. For the last of the specialty stores, I did manage to drop by the Jump Store in Tokyo Station. I'm not that big of a fan of the traditional long-running shonen genre like Dragon Ball, One Piece, Bleach, Naruto, and Gintama, but they did have these really ingenious Koro Sensei lollipops from Ansatsu Kyoshitsu, which I do thoroughly enjoy. One of the reasons I planned this trip during winter was because I wanted to attend Wonderfest. Being a huge figure fan, it is the one event that I look forward to twice a year, more so than Comic Cat. I always wake up early to see the live reports streaming online. Attending the event, however, was a whole different ball game. While not as crowded as Comic Cat, there was still much to see and much to do. Most of the time was spent wandering the grounds and looking at exhibits and consequently, I didn't want to spend much time queuing for figures that I could buy online later and miss the opportunity to experience the event fully. Highlights for me were definitely getting to try out the Cerevo Dominator and getting a close-up look at the prototype figments and the prototype dynamic change R Getter Robo. Still, I did manage to make away with two exclusive items, one being a commemorative Winter Wonderfest 2016 figure of the mascot Wonderchan based on the cover of this year's pamphlet. And the next figure being a Black Agumon and Gabumon from Mega House's Digicolle line. I guess I should also count in the Wonderfest pamphlet as part of my purchases as it does serve as one's entry ticket, unlike Comic Cat which is free. Sadly, I didn't pick up any garage kits even though that's technically what everyone's there for because I don't have the means nor the ability to assemble and paint them. Before leaving for Sapporo, while time was short, I managed to squeeze in a movie at my favourite movie theatre in Japan, Shinjuku World 9. The movie I watched was the first part of Kizumonogatari, which I felt was actually really enjoyable. In addition to a really adorable postcard that I got for watching the movie, I also bought the pamphlets for Kizumonogatari and Girls and Penza, even though I didn't have time to watch the movie. I also purchased an advance ticket for the Wii Cross movie, despite the fact I wouldn't be able to see it, to receive a special promotional card. The Sapporo Snow Festival is held during the same period as Wonderfest. As someone who lives right smack on the equator in Singapore, it was one of my dreams to see snow and boy did we get to see a lot of it. Almost too much I would say, as we were buffeted by snowstorms almost the entire time. At the festival itself, there were numerous anime themed sculptures and they were all gorgeous. The standout ones to me being Shingeki no Kyojin, Love Life, Dragon Ball, Macross and Madogatari. Snow Miku is the mascot for Kaido during winter and this year she was having a special collaboration with Love Life. From the festival, I got a wall scroll of Muse and Snow Miku and acrylic standee of Konoka and Snow Miku and the Snow Miku 2016 drink which I suppose is just relabeled Kelpis. Other Snow Miku merchandise I got at the New Chitose Airport's very own Snow Miku store and museum. Yes, there is actually one. It's a Snow Miku plush toy and a pack of Snow Miku branded milk caramels. And if that wasn't already enough candy, the next stop in Sapporo was the Shiroi Koibito Park. Sapporo is famous for the Shiroi Koibito, a chocolate cookie, and at the park we got to see the entire production process. Of course, it wouldn't be right to leave without actually buying a box of Shiroi Koibito cookies and a new product, hot chocolate based on the cookies. Last but not least, the Mado Gatari event. In commemoration of Shao's 40th anniversary, it was an exhibition featuring all of their past works, focusing heavily on two of their most popular, Poela Magi Madoka Magica and the Monogatari series, hence the name Mado Gatari. Being a fan of both franchises, I could not not go. 
They held their exhibition in Osaka and Tokyo prior and it again just so happened to be held in Sapporo at the exact same time I was going to be there. The timing couldn't be any more perfect. There were drawings, sketches and storyboards and I finally got to see that ballerina Madoka concept movie. But of course, what's most important is the merchandise and here is where I polished off the remainder of my budget. First off are the stuff that you get with your entry ticket. We get a card featuring Mami and Nadeko an exhibition guide map and a clear file. With my advance ticket, I also got a commemorative plaque from the event that was a real pain to assemble with a picture of Madoka and Homura dressed as Shinobu and Hitagi respectively. Next is a pamphlet for the event that gives you a great rundown of all of the exhibits and work. A wall scroll of the key visual with Madoka and Hitagi and a box of trading art free magnets featuring the two series. Following that are three sets of pretty awesome minifigures from both Bakemonogatari and Madoka. What else? We have Hitagi and Homura, Shinobu and Madoka, and Tsubasa and Mami. Not only are their costumes swapped, they are all doing the signature shaft head tilt which is the most amazing thing about these. Nothing screams shaft like the head tilt and these in my opinion are the perfect souvenirs that best encapsulate the event and legacy. Second only to that would be the very awesome fig fix figure of Shinobu crossed with Kyubei. Personally speaking, I'm not too sure how I feel about the fig fix line. They are not posable and they don't really fit in with figmas, but there are hardly any other fix pose figures that are of this scale. In fact, this is the first ever fig fix figure that I've ever purchased, and I guess if I were to get only one from the line, this would be the one. Last but not least, because I spent over 10,000 yen, I got a vinyl bag thrown in for free. It's really high quality, looks amazing and was a lifesaver during trip. And uh, that's pretty much it. The rest of my trip consisted of visiting locations from Haruhi and Digimon. I've posted most of the pictures from my adventures on my Facebook and will hopefully be consolidating them on my blog soon. Uh, perhaps I'll be posting more video footage on my YouTube channel in the weeks to come. If you did enjoy this video, please do let me know in the comments below and perhaps I'll do more videos in the future going over my acquisitions. So, this is Ekta saying, see you guys in the next episode.